Hey, fifth grade, happy Monday. I'm excited to start a new week with you guys and to see even more success. Please remember that you need to log on to Jupiter every single day. It is a requirement for all of the kids at St. James. And unfortunately, fifth grade is the only grade in the school that has kids who are not doing it. Every other grade, every student logs into Jupiter every day. In our grade, there are four students who are still not doing that. Please make it a habit that it's the first thing that you do when you log on to your computer, logging into Jupiter. In addition, it's part of your homeroom grade. So many of you are currently failing homeroom, which would be a really, really sad reason to not pass fifth grade. Please go ahead and work on that and please fix your habits if you need to. We are going to get started on our classwork today. Our worksheet is here for May 4th. I also want you to see, I posted this video on our assignment today. I don't want it to play because it'll be loud. Um, but Miss Sanborn took this video of us guys after mass one day and we were howling at Allie and Purdy. And so I put it on there just for like a little flashback Monday for you. Um, I remember we had so much fun, all of us howling at those dogs. Today's do now question. If you could make yourself an ice cream sundae, which toppings would you choose and why would you choose them? Um, my answer is that my dream ice cream sundae is vanilla bean ice cream with really sticky chocolate syrup. My pop used to make this chocolate syrup that was like super gooey and I loved it and with caramel sauce on it. I do not like whipped cream on my um, ice cream and I really, really don't like sprinkles or when there's a cherry on it. Go ahead and write four or more complete sentences and tell me what you would want on your dream ice cream sundae. When you're done, go ahead and press play and we'll start with the vocab. All right, so if you are listening to my voice again, that means you're ready for vocab. So let's open up to our books to page 135. The first thing I'm gonna do is give you the answers to our work from Friday, and then I will give you today's assignment. Starting with synonyms. All right, Jeremiah, what is number one? Oh, good. Jamel, what's number two? Massacre, good. Talia, what's number three? Monotonous, great. Anila, what's number four? Debate, wonderful. Dylan H, number five. Achievement, great. Andrew, six. Sprawl, fantastic. Switching to antonyms. Yes, dear, can you help me out with number one? Exhibit, very good. Um, number two, who's got it? Samaj, what is it? Ladder, very good, all right. Uh, Kendall, three is acquire. Look here, you got four. Widespread, great job. Mulani, what's number five? Preserve, excellent. And number six, who has got it? Dylan T. Good, sanitary. Nice job, guys. Your work for today is to do half of page 136. When you're finished, make sure that you highlight this section in green and then press play on the video for us to read. All right, if you have pressed play, that means that you are ready to read our next session. So we're going to be starting today on page 320, and we're going to read to page 330. This is chapter 17, and the drama is really, really escalating between dad and grandpa, and we're trying to learn a little bit more about that history there, and we're also starting to learn some more of the secrets that are being unveiled about Uncle Wood. 17, number 476. Teeth can reconnect to gums? How? The doctor said that when they're connected to other teeth around them, they can do it. Weird. Number 477. Why did grandma make me put Ernie's teeth in milk? To save them. Should I have put Michael Jackson in milk? Number 478. Should I be drinking more milk? I hate milk. Makes me poop. I can't believe I just read that out loud to you guys. Number 479. Why are the fang teeth called cuspids? Cuspid is almost cupid. Love bites. Number 480. What if Ma and Dad's trip was ruined? If they get divorced, is it my fault because I was the one who really wanted Ernie to shoot the gun? Number 481. What causes kickbacks anyway? I wish Ernie could kick kickback back. Number 482. How much do real nice sunglasses cost? 
Ernie got a hundred bucks from mom and dad for his birthday. So at least he'll be able to broke, fix his broken, replace his broken ones with better ones. Or maybe he can fix that chipped tooth. Jeannie set his pen down and snaked the spiral wire out of the first few holes of his notebook, holding it up against his mouth, trying to imagine what it felt like to be Ernie. He stayed upstairs with him most of the day. He figured that if it were him who had knocked his teeth out, he would want Ernie around even if he didn't want to talk. And Ernie didn't want to talk. And that was fine with Jeannie. He spent the rest of the day thinking and scribbling questions in between running down to the kitchen for snacks. Soft snacks, like applesauce and pudding. Man, even with a busted mouth, Ernie still ate a lot. Ernie fell asleep early that night, and for the first time ever, Jeannie was glad to hear him snore. He had been 14 for one day, and it was the worst day of his life. So to hear him calling the hogs, as Dad always said, and not be in much pain thanks to the medicine that Grandma had given him, was good. But it was still loud, and in between each snore, Jeannie could hear the familiar clicking coming through the floor from the kitchen. Grandpa was up. And Jeannie didn't know if Grandpa would be in a talking mood. And actually, Jeannie wasn't sure if he even wanted to talk to Grandpa about ev after everything that happened. But he was kind of hungry, so maybe he would just have some ice cream. Just sit down there until he got sleepy. When Jeannie got downstairs, there Grandpa was, just as Jeannie suspected. Sunglasses on, disassembling his gun again, twisting the screws, yanking at the poles at the revolver. Jeannie stood at the entranceway. All of a sudden, he was kind of nervous. What is it, Grandpa grumped? You want to be alone? Grandpa stopped fooling with the pistol. He kicked Jeannie's chair out from under the table. You sure you want my company? Jeannie didn't answer because he wasn't sure if he actually did. As far as he was concerned, this was pretty much mostly Grandpa's fault. How come Grandpa couldn't tell Ernie was scared? How come he couldn't hear that? But as mad as Jeannie was at Grandpa, the truth of it was that he was also mad at himself. He knew Ernie had been scared, but he had egged him on anyway. So Jeannie knew that he had messed up too. And not just with Ernie. The only difference was that Grandpa didn't know about some of it, about Michael Jackson. So Jeannie figured he and Grandpa could be the bad guys together. He slid into the seat. Grandpa went back to breaking the gun down. Jeannie could smell the liquor. He looked at the pieces of the gun on the table and realized that it was the first time that he didn't want to touch it. Not even a little bit. He didn't have any questions that he wanted to ask about it. He didn't even want to learn how to shoot anymore. And he came to the conclusion that if he had to do that to become a man, get his teeth knocked out, then he was fine just being a kid forever. Once Grandpa had the gun completely apart, he lined the screws and bits of metal all out, of the out on the table, like Jeannie always did when he was about to start building a model car. Grandpa ran his fingers along them. Then he guzzled the rest of his drink and he cleared his throat. Little Wood, he whispered. Yes. Could you take me outside? Could. But Jeannie wasn't sure he wanted to now. But then the image of Grandpa crawling around in the grass and leaves, slapping his hands against the ground, trying to get Ernie, came back. How all of Grandpa's fears of outside, of the unknown, disappeared when he heard his grandsons cry out. Don't you want to put the gun back together first? Jeannie asked. Grandpa tipped his glass nearly upside down to get the last few drops. No. Down the porch steps and into the yard, Grandpa barely held Jeannie's shoulder except for an occasional touch on the, for balance. He counted each step as usual, 17 to the middle of the yard, and now they were 12 steps to the left, putting them right around where Crab always parked. They paused. The crickets were crazy loud, which was a good thing, because otherwise it would have been weird with neither Jeannie nor Grandpa saying anything. Finally, Grandpa asked what he always asked. Little Wood, tell me, are the stars out tonight? Jeannie looked up. Not one star. Even the moon was mostly covered with clouds. No, he said, blunt. Grandpa grunted. Good. Let's just stand out here until it rains. Until it rains? Jeannie really wasn't into getting wet for no reason. What if it doesn't? He added, also worried that they would be hanging outside all night. It will. Grandpa took a deep breath. I can smell it.
And sure enough, it did. Not five minutes later. It came down hard and cold, and Jeannie wanted to go in, but Grandpa wasn't budging, so they just stood there, letting the rain wash over them. Jeannie couldn't tell for sure because they were both soaked, but he didn't think all the water on Grandpa's face was from the sky. Where do you guys think the other water could have been from on Grandpa's face? Miley, what do you think? Yeah, I think that the other water that he's talking about might be Grandpa's tears, which is just another time that we're learning that Grandpa's really a human. He made a mistake and he's feeling really, really sad about it. Things at Grandma and Grandpa's were pretty awkward for the next few days. Crab didn't show his face, a good thing. Grandma might have jumped on him if she saw him. Ernie eventually came down from the bedroom, even started going back outside again. But he refused to see Tess, even though Jeannie was pretty sure Tess wouldn't give a hoot about how Ernie looked. He spent most of his time with Samantha, playing fetch with the rubber tour, toy. Jeannie could tell that he was keeping an ear out for Tess, just in case she decided to come up the hill so that he could make it back into the house before she saw him. Jeannie didn't want to wait around for Ernie to get out of his funk. He couldn't afford to. He still had things to take care of, like figuring out how to fix that wheel on the model truck, and even more important task of catching a new Michael Jackson. So while Ernie let Samantha lick his sadness away, Jeannie, on day 16, ventured off to the yellow house to check the trap. This was the first time he would be going by himself, and he was kind of nervous. He went a little crazy, swinging his trusty stick in front of him, wiping away invisible webs that might have been homes to poisonous spiders, scaring away any lurking poisonous snakes. And, big bummer, the trap was empty. The box was down, but nothing was inside. It was most likely blown, up, blown over by the breeze. Day 17, the trap was still standing, as if not even the wind was interested in it. Day 18, Jeannie had, in fact, caught something, but not what he was hoping for. It was, go figure, a squirrel. If only Grandpa had taken a liking to squirrels and not birds, this would have been a much easier task. Luckily, squirrels didn't seem to be interested in flies, so at least the bait was still there. Whenever he wasn't traipsing through the woods, which was less and less scary each time, Jeannie would pop in and out of the inside-outside room to keep up with his duties. Grandpa was practically living there now, like he was hiding from everyone, like a broken bird in a bird cage. And whenever Jeannie came to tend to the plants to clean up a little and feed the four birds, pretending that there were five, Grandpa would ask him to leave. One time, he even barked at Jeannie, scaring him half to death. I'm sorry, son, I'm sorry, Grandpa said, running his hand across his own forehead. I'm just, I... Grandpa couldn't find his words. I know you're just helping out, and I appreciate that. So come back in and do it. But once you're done, you gotta let me be, okay? Let him be? Let him be what? Sad? Guilty? Part of Jeannie didn't really want to be around Grandpa anyway, but another part of him did, because he understood those feelings too. It seemed to Jeannie like Grandpa and Grandma had sort of switched places, and now Grandma and Jeannie were together most of the time mainly because they were the two the only two people in the house who were talking. Grandma was on a cooking frenzy, making all kinds of crazy soups so that Ernie wouldn't hurt his teeth on anything hard, and turned Jeannie into a sous chef, she called it, which was just a fancy word for a helper. When Grandma had finished up whatever soup she could make out of whatever was growing in her garden, she and Jeannie would play mash, a game that his mother had taught him, where the point was to randomly decide your life who you're gonna be with, your job, where you'll live, your car, and the best part, whether you will live in a mansion, an apartment, a shack, or a house. MASH. The rules were simple. Have you guys ever played this before? I used to play MASH all the time. When we come back together, and maybe when we go to North Bay, I can teach you how to play, it's really fun. Number one, create a list of four for each category. Number two, select a random number, something above 10. Number three, count through the list, crossing out whichever item your number lands on. Repeat the count until only one item is left in each category. That's your life. MASH, girls, jobs, places, cars. 
Shelley Detective Brooklyn 71 Mustang Mansion. Shelley Firework Namer China Dad's China Dad's Honda Shack. Shelley Mechanic Jamaica Spaceship Apartment. Shelley Firefighter Brooklyn School Bus House. Jeannie's best future life, according to MASH, with the count of 21, was the one where he lived in a mansion in Brooklyn, driving a Mustang, working as Detective Little Wood, and married to, of course, the one and only, Shelly. Not bad. Then, yeah, okay, last paragraph. Then, one morning, day 21, after Jeannie and Ernie had picked peas, yes, Ernie was still expected to do chores, Jeannie was in the kitchen, ripping a page out of his notebook for MASH version number eight, when Grandma plucked something in front of him. Jeannie did a double take. It was a book, the book that Grandma was always reading in her bedroom. That's where we're going to pause on our reading today, guys. So what I would like for you to do is go ahead and complete your writing right here, writing a four or more sentence journal about how you're doing today and about anything else that you might be interested in sharing me with me. Um, I know that Andrew is going to share that his birthday is coming up soon, uh, but just go ahead and give me some messages in there so I know what's going on. Good luck with the rest of your work. Stay organized, log into Jupiter, and I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow.